So, for this video, I thought we would take a look at the Cray J90's IOS cabinet, and IOS stands for Input Output Subsystem. We have from the front here, I've got the uh, beautiful door open with its ripples. There's just a little pop catch on the top, it's quite nice. It's not obvious unless you're seven feet tall. We have disc shelves, in this case I have six disc shelves here. And then this is the actual iOS shelf itself. It's a VME based system, we'll take a look at that in a second. I've rolled the uh, system around to its side and mostly all that you can see are the racking for the shelves. Uh, this uh, large cabinet here is the actual iOS, or drawer rather. And then this giant pile of mess is all of the cabling and uh, they're actually wrapped up and round right now. Normally what will happen is they come uh, round on the inside and in between these bulkheads then they run into the other system and they would be cable tied to uh, these rails here that have all the holes in them. So I've got the unit completely rolled around, the uh, rear door is open, it has these little, little latches top and bottom that just use a hex key to lock it in place. Uh, slightly below frame is the AC input. Each of the shelves has their own built-in power supply. So the AC input comes to a distribution box, which then runs up the side, and you can see cabling and plugs on this big uh, distribution bar here. There's also a whole bunch of DB9s, which I believe is attached to a sequencer to bring everything up in order. See this? huge cable race here, uh, the tracks for the units when they roll out. You've also got a couple articulated arms for each of the disc shelves, so all of the cabling nicely tucks in and out of the way. At the bottom is the bulkhead panels. This is where all of the rear connectors would be for external disc shelving, things like that. The iOS has many boards which we'll see in a second and they may have one or more connectors that come off the back of them. In mine almost all of them then route through to the processing cabinet but in some of them you could have external ethernet, um, HIPI for an external device, uh, FIDI for an external drive, so on and so forth. Uh, mine the bulkhead is pretty much empty except for the lowest one here where there is a Ethernet, it's a coax 10B2 Ethernet and that is for the um, SWS. There's also an AUI down there which may be ThinNet also for a local Ethernet to the SWS. I'm probably not that lucky but it might be. I haven't fully checked the internal wiring yet. And then on top we have more of this ubiquitous cabling. These are huge piles of cables here including all of the Y1 cables that uh, normally would obviously go between the two cabinets and plug into the processor boards. So this is the rear of the iOS drawer as before. These big honking black cables here are SCSI cables running to all of the disk drawers you can see here. The grey cables are the Y1 cables. Some of these cables have been manually routed. Uh, this big honking sucker here that uh, comes out here, loops around, comes back. Uh, this appears to be going to a disc shelf down the bottom. So it looks like somebody started to do some manual rewiring. So I'm going to have to figure out how that goes. The cables come out of the back of the bulkhead on the iOS cabinet and they run through these cable chases and they go in and down and then appear to split and come back around through some channels on either side here. It appears the Y1's on this side and all the SCOSIs on that side. And I'm not entirely certain as yet how in the hell you get into these. I'm assuming when the drawer is rolled all of the way out that will give you access to it. But not actually sure. The disc shelves though appear relatively standard. Uh, they have SCSI terminators, regular SCSI cabling. It appears that it is two channels per shelf. The uh, disc shelves are held in with uh, four screws. 
melt into the uh, rack ears here. And they have uh, these uh, threaded inserts that uh, they screw into. Thankfully, I do love these drawers. Nice smooth action. And as you can see, they are quite deep. So I've undone all of the screws. There are 20 of them. Thankfully, um, they are just 90 degree twists, so I don't have to wind them all out. And on the inside, you can see we have four full height 8 inch drives. I've unscrewed this one. They're on little trays, thankfully. They are narrow, scurry, scuzzy each. There's a uh, power supply here that runs down the middle of the drawer. And then there are a couple fans up here. Most of the wiring, which I don't think is easily evident down here, is either for the fans to power or for inhibit and fault lights on the front. Pull the uh, scuzzy drive clean out. And it is a Seagate ST, where is it there, 410800WD. And one of the better things I ever did in my life was to learn the Seagate um, numbering mechanism. 4 is full height 8 inch drive. The 10800 is the capacity. So this is a 10 gig drive and then WD stands for narrow SCSI. So, 4 in each, 6 shelves. That's 24 drives or 200 and I'm sorry, 24 drives. No, yeah, 24 drives, 240 gigs of storage space. So that's pretty exciting. That's quite a lot of storage. And that's a good thing. The iOS uh, drawer itself, you can see it's labeled VME chassis. We have local switches to turn the unit on and off. We've got a DC OK, a fault with the fans, big filter cover handles and then we have a couple ports for SCSI devices at least I believe that's what this is being a five and a half plate this is a DAT drive the way you normally install Unicos or at least the way that it was installed at least up until version 9 for these machines is via DAT so the system would be booted and then you would install the software off the DAT drive thankfully in later releases it can be done through CD Hopefully, much like the disk drawer, there are four screws I've already removed. It does make a rather interesting noise when it comes out. So this is where things get interesting for the I.O. cabinet. An awful lot of cables and a VME backplane with a bunch of cards. So first we have all of our cables hanging down here. I believe underneath this unit here, where the cables are sculling down, is the power supply. We have fans with a filter in the front. This is a Centercom transceiver. We've got our 10B2 coax here running to the front. Bunch of AUIs coming out the sides. We have a range of cards as well as at least one blanking plate, mm, two blanking plates. We've got a whole bunch of DC6Ss, IOBB64, IOP, more DC6Xs, IOBB, IOP, da 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 da. We have an EI1, an FI2, DC6S, IOBB64, IOP. So there is more than one iOS system in this VME backplane. And I know what the DC6S's are. These are SCSI controllers. Each of these black cables here runs through to a SCSI cable or a SCSI header on the bulk head of the iOS drawer. The FI2 is easily identified as it has this fiber cable coming out of it. This is FDDI. It's got a redundancy switch here so that if anything happens it'll flip between the two links. EI1 is Ethernet. 
and it's AUI and runs all the way back to the bulkhead. So now I know that the AUI that's on the back of this system is not for the iOS per se, but for Unicos. Well, that's good news. That means that I have a Ethernet connection to the Unicos machine. Also means I have to find TNB2, but that's another story. So, the IOBB64 and the IOPs are sort of the interesting ones here. And it turns out that these are a board pair. So if we pull the AUI from the IOP, and these two beautiful connectors here, which is the Y1 cables, and we'll pull the BB64 first. Remove these clips. Slots out nicely, mostly nicely. Oh, well that's not very exciting, it's just a buttload of RAM, hmm. Now this is a bit more interesting. This here is an Ultra Spark 3. It's a Spark Lite, actually, and this is its memory controller. It's a memory management unit. It's got some local cache in VRAM, ROM, Ethernet controller, so on and so forth. So, each IO, each IOS is made up of a board pair that make up the system, and then one or more cards that run underneath it. And the way that the system is designed, the processor processes, that's all it does. The I.O., disks, Ethernet, everything that comes in and out of the system runs through an individual I.O. processor. Now you can run a whole pile of disks off a single I.O. or you can spread them out to manage workload. This is what makes this a supercomputer, at least one of many reasons it's a supercomputer, is that they have separated the processing of things like SCSI commands and Ethernet commands and things like that off from the main processor. The main processor, the only thing it does is, aside from run Unicos, processing the data, crunching the data that you need it to do. All of the I.O. is offloaded to this little machine here. Magic, or four machines the case may be. That also is part of the issue is that I've got to figure out how this thing gets configured. So, I think that's enough for another video. We're now two racks down, a couple more things to go, and we'll be current. If you have been, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys have a good day.